Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Hand Mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. Today we have here a John Deere S240, and I'm going to show you how to start and operate it. The first thing you want to do is check your oil. If you just got it from the dealer, if you just got it you know, shipped to you, make sure you check the oil to make sure it has it. And this is a twin cylinder Kawasaki engine. This is on the S240. It's a nice motor. This is the oil dipstick right here. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out. We're going to wipe it off. And with the Kawasaki engines, you do not screw it in. It might even say it on the dipstick. It says, for correct level, do not turn cap on threads. So it says it right on right on here. You probably won't be able to see that in the video, but it does say it. You're going to just put it on top. I usually turn a little bit, not much. Pull it back out again. This one is right on the mark. You have a little bar graph there. This is right sitting at the top of the bar graph. That is on the mark spot full. Battery is here. Okay, now the batteries that they give you from the get-go, they usually have a strap like this. That's actually um, from the factory. Not sure how long this batteries last. They used to be cheaper in the cheaper versions of John Deere's. This is a 300 cold crank amp battery. This should be a very good battery for you. And if you do need to replace them, 300 cold crank amps is the way to go. So that is the engine and the battery. Let's take a walk around this thing and show you. We have your foot pedals here. This is your forward and reverse for your transmission. So you just push forward and you push reverse so it can go forward and reverse. You do have a, this is a cruise control that you can use when you're operating the machine. You're just going to go ahead and you're going to push your pedal down forward. You're going to lift up the cruise control and let go. And then what that does is that actually keeps you, if you have a large property and you have many acres to cut and you don't want to have your foot on that pedal, that's the way you do it. You're probably wondering how to take the, the cruise control off. All you have to do is push on the pedal a little bit and that'll actually release it. And you cannot, they will not let you use it in reverse, obviously. It doesn't work in reverse. It only works in forward, okay? And that's if you need to use the cruise control. That's the cruise control. Since we're here, I'm gonna show you that this is the, the electronic PTO, which is the power takeoff for your mower deck. You pull this up and that turns your mower deck on push it down turns it off now if you do run out of gas I've had people call me and they say Brad my mower ran out of gas and now it won't start if you run out of gas in the middle of your yard and this is up and you don't realize you know when you ran out of gas that you have to push this back down to start it make sure you push it back down if you ever had it stall you know run out of gas and you forget to push this back down that is one safety check to check to make sure that the engine will start this is the ignition here you have a couple different modes the first one is lights on and on this one when you turn the lights on you can actually see that they actually turn on when you turn the key to the lights so make sure you do not leave your lights on you can drain the battery then you have the on and then you have crank which is right here and obviously it won't crank because we don't have our foot on the emergency brake which we'll get to in a second here I'm gonna turn this off come around to the back here now uh, this is a um, nice seat uh, I guess this is a medium back seat I want to show you the fuel gauge is here. Now this fuel gauge fluctuates. It looks like he has about three quarters to full tank of gas. And I'm going to show you how this works is you stay there and I'm going to push up and down on the gas tank and you can see how that fluctuates. So when I raise up the gas tank by hand and I'll show you this, how it works here. A lot of people get kind of weird. A lot of people are like, what's wrong with my gas tank? It's the way it's made. John Deere has made a very loose, it's a spring-loaded version of a tank. What happens is, is that when it gets low on fuel, it actually raises up and it shows you your gas gauge over here, which is in the front there. So don't be alarmed that when you take the gas cap off and this thing is actually just moving around when it's empty, it's the way it's supposed to be. I wouldn't go and just wrestle it around because it may break something. Just be, be aware that when it's empty, this does move around a lot. Since we're back here, I also want to show you that this is in the, in the uh, push mode right now. When you're going to run the tractor, and I was just pushing this around the shop, you want to put this in. That's in the transmission go mode right here. They're showing a guy on a tractor cutting his lawn, a person on a tractor cutting his lawn. So that's in go mode. When you want to push the machine, make sure your emergency brake is off. Make sure it's pulled all the way out, and then this will move very freely. Okay, that is very important to know. You don't want to push the tractor when this is in because you can hurt the hydro transmission. Just remember that. Okay, coming around to the left side, we have your deck up and down right here. It does have some numbers on the side of this. Uh, you probably can't see them, but 
I just recommend going in your yard, getting it where you want it as far as your height, leaving it where it is as far as uh, you know, how the grass like to be cut, how high you want it to be cut, and just leave it where it's at. It's up to you how you how you use this, but that is your deck height adjustment right there. I'm gonna go ahead and get back on my machine, start you how to just to show you how to start it. But emergency brake handle is here. We have an emergency brake here on this side. Always get in a habit of putting the brake all the way on, lifting up the brake lever, let go in the brake, and that's locked in. Now we can start the machine. Make sure your PTO is off. You have a yellow button right here. This is your reverse lockout, which means you can cut in reverse. You just have to push this button in before you push your reverse pedal. So just keep that in mind. You can cut in reverse. You have to push this button in while you're push, push the button in before you push your reverse pedal and then you can let go of it while you're in reverse. It'll still cut in reverse. You just have to, unfortunately, you have to do it every time you go in reverse. When you move forward to come back in reverse again, you have to hit the button again. This is your throttle and choke. Okay, so Kawasaki, you have to have a throttle and choke separately. Now it feels a little stiff right here, and that's normal because that's actually, so it doesn't vibrate back down after you're in a fast position. I normally start the machines personally in about half throttle. I like to let them warm up a little bit before I, you know, full speed when you have the motor deck on. And that was another couple questions that people had was, when should I put, when should I put the blades on? I recommend half to three quarter if you're not in grass. If you're doing it in your grass and the grass is eight inches high, well then you're gonna be, your cutting deck is gonna be hard to actually engage. So you may need more throttle, but usually half to three quarter throttle so it's not engaging fully. Um, you're, not, you're not engaging the deck at like 3,600 3, RPM so fast. You just kind of medium throttle to three quarter and then up to fast to get, get cutting. This is also the choke on this side here. And with Kawasaki, they're normally spring-loaded. This one has a little spring-loaded to it. So what you want to do is half throttle, hold it up on choke. The, my emergency brake is in, and I'm going to hold it on choke, and I'm going to go ahead and crank it up and start it. And as soon as it starts, I'm going to take it off a of choke. And all we have to do is push in the brake, push down the handle, go to brake and then you can come over to your pedal. You're gonna come over to your pedals right here for that four. Okay so we're gonna take this outside so I can show you how to cut in reverse and uh, turn the lower neck on and we'll be right with you. Okay so we're outside and I'm gonna show you how to cut in reverse. First thing you want to do is get your deck height where you want. We're going to go ahead and start it up, up on choke. We're going to actually have a half throttle up on choke. Now you're probably not going to be able to hear me. So okay, so now I'm going to fire the machine up and I'm going to show you, I'm going to fire the machine up, I'm going to turn the motor deck on. And this particular, with the electric PTO, when you go in reverse and you don't have the button pushed in, the motor deck will stop, but the engine will not stop and then you have to push the button back in again and pull the button up to make the motor deck run again. And then we're gonna show you that the, uh, by pushing the button in and going reverse, that it's gonna work. So let's go ahead and fire it up. I'm gonna go ahead and put the motor deck on and go forward. guys got that it was a little hard to do i got to get myself a mic so you guys can hear me but you have to make sure that you push the button in then push your reverse pedal okay don't push the reverse pedal and then the button push the button in then reverse pedal and then you can let go and you can cut in reverse as soon as you go forward again 
you do have to remember that when you go in reverse, hit the button, push your pedal down, and you can cut in reverse. I know it's a lot. Once you guys get used to it, it'll be like second nature. Um, that pretty much sums it up for how to start and operate a John Deere S240. This has a 40, 42 inch deck on it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I appreciate everybody watching my videos. Please subscribe, tell your friends about my channel, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Okay, so one thing I did forget to tell you guys is the seat. The, I told you that it was a high back, nice seat. It actually might be a medium back. But you can actually, if you lift up on the seat here, nice handle right here. You can actually adjust the seat. There's different notches. And the way I would recommend adjusting it, this is just my opinion, is you hop on it, pull the handle up. You can either move rearward or forward. And then you just let go and it'll lock in. So people that can't hit the brake, the emergency brake quite right, it's actually good that you can actually move these seats back and forth, so it is a nice feature. And then the other feature that I was missing is that there is a nice little cup holder, not a cup holder, it's a cup holder here, but then you can put gloves, safety glasses in your little holder right there, and that, that's pretty much it.